hi beloveds welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is aisha so in this video i attended a book chat with aibame adibayo for our latest book called a spell of good things she was in conversation with simon savage from booktube and it was my first time seeing simon in person so it was a nice experience and yeah i hope you enjoy this video as much as i enjoyed the book chat Saji's here again because Saji's a fanboy like that. Hello? Sorry, sorry? <laughs> Getting married. At last. Glory be to God in the highest and on the earth. Peace. When lies creamed his way into our life just before Christmas, all those years ago, Yeye had assumed that the fear she felt was transient, one more consequence of how close she had been to death during those 23 hours of labor. But the fear did not dissipate as expected. It was with her while she nursed first Lai, then Wuraula, and finally Motara. While she packed lunches and helped with homework, pronounced punishments and studied report cards. Fear was a perpetual companion, closer and more constant than a shadow. It lapped at the edges of her mind while she slept, so that she called out the name of one child or the other, even when her nightmares had nothing to do with them. And then something strange and wonderful had happened when Lai got married. Where her fears about him had congealed into utter terror, after that foolish decision to stop practicing medicine and chase his dreams, they dissolved into only the mildest agitation as soon as he said his vows. During the week that followed Lai's wedding, Yeye had waited in vain for her agitation to intensify. Instead, she felt unburdened, like someone who had finished a class and received a final passing grade. Eventually, her mild agitation gave way to something like peace. So what if Lai had decided to throw away a career in medicine? At least he still had that MBBS, and whatever he decided to do with it was really his wife's problem. This new feeling of freedom was accompanied by a trace of guilt, the suggestion that by worrying less, she had become a bad mother. Guilt was fickle and easy to ignore. So was the thought that Lai might be upset by her diminished interest in the details of his life. Yeye had long made a peace with the idea that she would be found wanting in some way by her children. If they believed what everyone claimed, that mothers were peerless gods forged out of precious gold, how could she, how could she not fall short of their expectations? It was the destiny of gods to be toppled. Yeye never worried that her children might think she was not a good mother. That was inevitable. What terrified her, above all, was the possibility that they might come to harm under her watch. Now that Lai was married and belonged to his wife in a way that, though he would never recall his connection to her, managed to be as overarching, Yeye no longer called out her son's name while she slept. In a year or less, she would stop calling out Wuraola's name too. Yeye rose to her feet, invigorated. One week ago, she had been worried that this Kule boy was wasting her wura last time. Now, she had a wedding to plan. Thank you very much. The idea for this novel came from, because I believe it was quite a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I think it must have been, it must have been 2013 actually. Um, earlier in 2013, I was um, sort of, I was coming back from work and I was living um, in Ileife, I was working in Elisha in Nigeria and I was coming back from work and there was some traffic and we had to make a detour and we ended up in this neighborhood that I I mean I'd lived in that city for at least two decades if not more and of course I knew that there were class divides and people were on different but this was like nothing I'd ever seen before in that city and I was just I guess for the rest of the week, I kept thinking to myself, how did I not know that this kind of neighborhood was here? And I think that from that point, I really wanted to write a book about that, about 
what remains invisible to people even when they are in the same space you know whether it's a city or even within a family and um, and then I came to UEA later that year and wanted to work on another novel which my computer crashed and it disappeared <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean I feel like it's it's I've only started talking about it in public after this one got published it, it was such a devastating experience because um, you know I'll just tell you the story I stayed up all night sort of working on it, it was about 10,000 words I'd written and sort of editing it because I had to submit it for a workshop and then I went to the library to print from my computer and it fell down and the screen just went black and I hadn't emailed it to myself or put it on the cloud and that was that and um, and so I started writing this book instead <laughs> <laughs> so that's sort of how, but it, it, I'd, I'd been thinking about how to write, you know, that kind of book. And then I wrote the first chapter and then, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, you connected with Eniola like that, because there's a lot of people in this book. But he, he was, he, for me, he's the heart of the book. He, he, was, he was the one that I was with from the beginning. And um, yeah, in many ways, it, it's a, it really is a story. You were telling me earlier that, um initially it wasn't actually him mm -hmm. and uh Warola who was going to be the main character there was another one mm -hmm. and it changed i wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and why that happened because i find it fascinating when another character mm -hmm. comes to the fore yes um so when i started writing this book it was going to be two teenagers from so it was eniola and motara who is the younger sister in the other family and what was the first chapter initially ended with them meeting. In this book, they never meet, you know. It ended with them sort of meeting and having a conversation. And it was at that moment that I sort of knew, oh, I'm interested in this other family and this family that this young girl comes from. And then I wrote um, the first draft from the two of them. I kept going back and forth between the two of them. And at some point I realized that I was, writing from Motara's perspective because I didn't want to be in Varela's mind, you know, and then I just had to sort of <laughs> woman up and just go there. I, I really didn't want to go, I wanted to, you know, look at it from, at what is going on with Varela from the outside, you know, and the first moment that we realize what's going on Motara's chapter is sort of very close to what that chapter is very close to what it was initially that we sort of the first time we see that we see it from her looking at it and I realized that I just didn't want to deal with it that intimately and um but I, I had to you know there's a family where there's such an excess you know, the aunties are coming with all the myths and all of that. And there's another family where every piece of granite is treasure, treasure. The part of it was really that I started writing this book um, when I was in Norwich and really missing my drone food. Right, and I remember this was so ridiculous that I would sometimes go online and look at photos of food. <laughs> I do that quite regularly. Yeah. And I remember the first time I was going back home, I was telling my sister what I wanted to eat before I left Norwich. Um, so I, I think that that really fed into it. Huh? I got that word about food. <laughs> it really, you know, comes together in the book that I, I really just started writing a lot about food based on that as a form of you know it was i was nostalgic for a lot of nigerian food and by the time i then read it again i thought oh, this is quite useful um to, as a stand-in for where the families are and something that is so basic and so essential um particularly when you think about any relationship to it and what it means to him you know when he sort of crosses a divide and experiences an abundance that he is not imagined in a long time you know um how it can be a motivation you know but also how important it is like there's, there's two scenes that really stuck with me one was um where i think it's matara dares to serve her father 
cold water when it's <laughs> raining. And I had not heard of this at all and how it must be warm and the respect around that. Yeah. But also then you'll hear how Eniola's going through this horrific time where basically they're eating stuff off the floor mm -hmm. because it's spilled. Mm -hmm. And yet back elsewhere, you don't finish your meal, you don't finish your drink mm. because that's disrespectful. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, like, I mean, that's so, yeah, that's so, you know, there's just that contrast and the, you know, there's this, you know, this family who's more wealthy, um, when you go visiting someone, you don't finish everything just so that they don't think that you're hungry, you know, like, you're not being like this poor people who are so hungry that they finish all the food. And I mean, of course it goes to waste, I, I assume. Um, and then in the same city, in the same space, um, we've organized society in such a way that there's a child who's literally picking food off the floor to survive. Yeah. He has lost his job, and I think um, he's always struggled you know, um, with his mental health. And and he's lost his job, and he's, he's really devastated by the experience, and he's really sunk at this point into a depression. And, and in the book, I don't think that word is used at, used at all no. because I really wanted to think about how many people experience their lives even if they don't have the language for what is going on with them. And so that was very important to me that, I mean, that particular incident that happened um, in my home state in Nigeria where a lot of teachers were laid off. I knew people whose parents had been laid off and it was on the phone, my friends and mom became very depressed after that. And, you know, it, it had quite a bit of impact. And in, in many instances, these are conversations that are not had. Or, and, you know, with him in particular, I feel like his wife really tries to understand what is going on with him. There are other people who don't and who don't give him the grace, you know, that is necessary for that space that is in at that moment. So that was also important to me to have a way of sort of looking at that you know and the conversations that may, in some instances you know you know that that person probably committed to something but we're not going to talk about that mm. yeah. that was something that comes up a lot is where um you talk about well in the book it talks yeah. about how the, there's this whole generation of men who sort of just disappeared and nobody yeah. talked about it yeah. and what happened and they all happened to be teachers and um, Language and words are a huge part of this book, be they letters that are written to people or diaries that people find that they shouldn't. Um, you really celebrate the language, again, with using the names. Was that intentional? Because yeah. books are huge in this. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I'm a, I, I like to read a lot. Um, and and it's, it's something that's important to me. And with this book, I really wanted to sneak in as many books as I could, um, or as many book recommendations as I could, <laughs> um, you know, and also just, uh, I feel like the sisters were very, enjoy the younger sisters, I really enjoyed writing them, um, Matara, because she's so, she's just many Nigerian mother's nightmare, <laughs> you know, she's just so herself, and such an interesting person to me and Bisola because she she really loves books and I could just with her have a bit of nostalgia for, for some of the books that were really important to me growing up um but the language yes it was very important for me um so there's there's quite a bit of Yoruba in it but there's also like my own dialect of Yoruba which many Yoruba people might not even know for me, and we are, we are talking. I'm not thinking of us. Got it. Videos from every different angle. Yeah. 
Hi. I see we have gotten on. That was <laughs> that was a very fulfilling um event. So I got my copy of this book signed. I mean I have the proof copy that I'm reading, but I got this one signed. So so lovely to see you again. But yeah, one of the main characters' name is Eniola, which is my second name. So I got her to write that. Uh, and I also got her to resign this copy that I already had. She signed it in Aki. So I got her to sign it again in Manchester. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.